Hello from my side, this is Patrick Greichen from Agora Energiewende in Germany and I would like to use uh, my 10 minutes to share with you our insights on the role of hydrogen in climate neutrality. Hydrogen is a crucial part toward climate neutral economies and I'll show you what but also the limits. First of all, who are we? Agora Energiewende is an independent, non-partisan think tank we are located in Berlin, we're working on the energy transition in Germany, in Europe and throughout the world and full of experts, uh, we're funded mostly by philanthropies and foundations and we have one mission, we want a globally prosperous world without carbon, so that's our job. We have, as you can see on the map, uh, a network of partners all over uh, the world because uh, we're working with think tanks from around the globe together to make this vision real. Uh, also in Asia, also in South Korea, we're working on uh, how can we jointly get uh, the climate neutral world uh, life and find out the solutions for that. Um, we have been uh, publishing several policy and studies, uh, pro policy proposals and studies in the past years to make this happen and uh, as you can see here climate neutral Germany is uh, our latest publication depicting how we can in Germany go to net zero that is uh, zero greenhouse gas emissions um, by 2050 and of course as you can see at the other a study uh, a climate neutral industry uh, a clean energy industry package is what is needed for that so um, we will also need to work on getting industry carbon neutral. Now, what is the role of hydrogen in all this? First of all, we have to differentiate. There are different green or low carbon hydrogens. There is uh, green hydrogen, which is produced from renewables via electrolysis, and that is purely carbon neutral. There is no carbon in this process, therefore there are no CO2 emissions. The second uh, option is blue hydrogen. Blue hydrogen is uh, derived from natural gas via steam reforming. Then you get uh, hydrogen uh, and then you take the CO2 that is emitted in that process and put it below the ground. Uh, so it is combined with CCS. Steam reforming is a process we already know. A lot of uh, countries, a lot of e companies are using it today. So the new part to this is CCS. However, we have to note this is not climate neutral because there are CO2 emissions that are still emitted. And of course, with natural gas, you have fugitive uh, methane emissions, and that is also bad for the climate. So this is better than fossil, but it's not zero carbon. And then the third option, which is uh, looming on the horizon, it's turquoise uh, hydrogen, um, also coming from natural gas, but then we uh, put pyrolysis uh, and plasmalysis, and then you have um, concrete carbon. So you have uh, hydrogen on the one side, but then not uh, CO2 in, uh, as, as a gas, but uh, then um, pellets of carbon, which you can then use for building houses or store it somewhere uh, below the ground. Now, um, of these three options, green hydrogen is the only one that is really zero carbon emissions, zero greenhouse gas emissions. The others uh, still have emissions and are therefore not climate neutral, but low carbon. And the second thing we have to be aware of um, is um, direct use of electricity is always more efficient than the route via hydrogen. So it's important to keep that in mind. For example, when you look at a car, a battery electric vehicle is much more efficient than a fuel cell vehicle uh, which uses hydrogen. The same when it comes to heating. Electric heat pumps uh, uh, have about six times the efficiency than a fuel cell heating based on hydrogen. So what I'm saying here is 
don't uh, uh, dream that hydrogen will replace everything where we currently use oil and gas. Uh, we will have electricity replacing oil and gas wherever that's efficient and we already know that this is the case uh, especially for cars but also for the heating sector. Now we looked at Germany, we looked at how does one get to net zero by 2050 and we divided that into three steps. The first step is reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 65% by 2030 which means basically get coal phase out done by 2030, ramp up uh, renewables so that we have a really clean power mix, 70% renewables, 30% gas. That's the power mix of Germany in 2030. The second element after 2030 is then get emissions down to near zero to minus 95%. That's where in every sector, in industry, in energy, in uh, buildings, uh, we will only use carbon neutral technologies because otherwise you risk stranded assets uh, that cannot be used after 2050 anymore. And then the third step, that is CCS. There are remaining emissions, mostly coming from agriculture, by the way, and those remaining emissions will need to be compensated and that's why we have biomass CCS and direct air capture CCS as uh, the elements to get down to net zero. Now, where does hydrogen play its role in this three steps towards climate neutrality? Well, it kicks in really as of 2030 in large volumes. So up to 2030 is about building up the infrastructure, getting the first uh, markets uh, to place and big volumes are uh, really coming in after 2030. And as you can see, it is most relevant for the industry and the energy sector. That's where we will use the hydrogen. Uh, here is a bit more in detail how much hydrogen we've been uh, using in our study to get Germany to net zero. So there is some 27 terawatt hours of hydrogen in our system uh, in 2050 and you can see how it gradually starts as of 2030. Now as I've been saying cars it's more efficient to do electric cars and heating it's more efficient to do heat pumps. So where we will really need the hydrogen is in the power sector for those times when there is neither wind nor sun. It is in the uh, district heating systems when you cannot use the heat pumps, so when there is no wind. It is in industry to get steel industry clean, to get the chemical industry clean, to get uh, uh, ammonium production clean. That's where you need hydrogen. And of course, shipping, aviation, where you need a clean fuel. So these are the sectors where hydrogen will really be used. And Germany will be an importing country we will not be able to produce that much renewables to get uh, the green hydrogen in place. Therefore, we will be, as you can see here in the picture on the right hand side, be importing most of our hydrogen demand. So, sum up, what is our conclusion? There is a bright future out there for clean hydrogen because we need it towards climate neutral Germany, towards climate neutral Europe and all over the place. Um, but let's focus on those sectors where it's really needed. Uh, and uh, blue hydrogen can only be a temporary solution. In the end, to become really net zero, it will need to be green hydrogen. This is a joint effort for all of us. Climate neutrality is the challenge for the world, for Germany, for Europe, for Asia, for America. And we are looking forward to collaborate with uh, people, think tanks, initiatives all over the world to jointly make that happen. Thank you.